Hi, it's your girl, Danny Parks. Listen, if you are having any type of suicidal thoughts, if you're having any type of mental health crisis, I want you to dial the new suicide hotline, 988. That's right, it's only three numbers and it's 988. You can call this or text it to be connected to a crisis counselor where they can help you through your situation in that moment. Once again, that number is 988 and that's it. All right, I'll see y'all later. Uh-huh. Has made. She's a queen. This is dedicated to all my beautiful queens, all my beautiful ladies out there. She's a queen. Good queen. So thank you guys for joining another episode of the Key Chat. Today, my very special guest is Ms. Beverly Johnson. Beverly is an entrepreneur and she's a fitness expert in a wonderful mission with wellness. So I wanted to talk to her today just about how we can take better care of ourselves and also my favorite topic, self-love. So how are you doing today? I am well, and thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. I'm so happy to speak with you. So I love your mission that you're working with, just trying to educate us and remove certain mindsets about fitness and wellness. So I wanted to start off with asking you, how did you become, what led you to, I guess, be a part of this journey with fitness? Because I know like there's a lot of times when we joke about black women, we don't work out because of our hair, stuff like that. And I'm just a hole in our community sometimes that we may not talk about fitness and wellness as much as we possibly should. So what has been your passion with this mission? Well, I will tell anyone I am an accidental entrepreneur. I mm -hmm. did not grow up with this idea that I was going to be an entrepreneur, that I was going to have this great lifestyle. In a way, it picked me. Mm. Um. I had been sick. I went through, let's see, early 2010 is she? Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. was diagnosed with endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And for those that aren't familiar with endometriosis, that is when your uterine lining can attach itself to any place in your body, from your bowels to your bladder, uh, to your stomach, to anywhere that it, it has, it wants to go. And so because of that, I had to go through a series of surgeries to try to correct it. And so my normal workout pattern got interrupted because I would always like run, lift weights. And so I was in a space where I couldn't do that. And so I was just happened to go into the gym and saw this Zumba fitness class. And I was like, what are they doing back there? And I walked in and was like, okay, I'm bored being on the treadmill. Let me go see what this is about. Mm -hmm. had the best time of my life I was uncoordinated I was all over the place everybody was going left I was going right they were twerking I was not my was my twerk that wasn't giving twerk um but I, I had the best day of my I had I felt free mm -hmm. and from that I went ahead stayed with going to the class went ahead and got my license to teach Zumba fitness and as I was finishing class and everything else, it's a very humbling thing when women come up to you and go, hey, I'm experiencing this. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. I've noticed you overcame this. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. And so I did the natural progression and went and got my, my certifications. And almost, I can say, the rest is history because the calling picked me. Mm -hmm. wow. Because I know what... I had to go through in my fitness journey and in my own health and recovery journey. And what sparked it was having a surgeon tell me the stronger you go into your surgery, the better your recovery and the faster your recovery will be. Wow. And I was like, say less. Mm. And so 
that was my motivation before I had a surgery. Like, okay, I got a surgery. Okay, I need to get in my best condition possible so recovery would be easier. And so my recovery time was like, okay, time to get back up. And so that was a thing that I'll tell everybody that was my first client in learning how to heal my body, heal my mind, heal my spirit. Because when you go through a series of surgeries and your body's changing and you have scars and everything else, then I add, I had relational problems going on too, where I saw mm -hmm. the demise of my marriage. So it was this perfect storm. Mm -hmm. So fitness was my sanity. Yeah. Going to the gym was, was my happy place because for a little while I could just nurture my mind and my body and my spirit. Wow, that's an amazing journey. So with Zumba, enlighten us for some people who may not be familiar with Zumba, like with the fitness class, what you guys do. So tell us about Zumba first. So Zumba Fitness is a form of dance cardio aerobics where it is set to international beats. So it is it pays tribute to all the genres throughout the world. So you will have salsa, cumbia, reggaeton, um, Afro beats. Um, so it rep, um, Bollywood, it is very intentional about giving a face to all the genres of the world. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a space and you've never heard Afro beats, you'll come to a Zumba class. You're like, wait, what, what is that? You've never heard Bollywood. You're like, what is that? It is basically your introduction to the world. Mm. Wow. So another thing I wanted to ask you, like I said, you have a wonderful mission. So, so many things that I did read about you. So one thing I read with your mission with Zumba Fitness and wellness, your wellness journey, is that you want to implement motivational wellness routines into the everyday women's lives. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think um, fitness can be like working out. You have to be disciplined. Sometimes it's hard for people to get into a routine. Everyone's busy. So many different things going on. So how can we fit in just some great wellness routines into our lives? Because taking care of our outer course is really important. And as you mentioned, like having cirrhosis and just with your surgeries, how like your doctor advised you, like if the stronger you are, the healing time is less, which is something that is very notable to, you know, to know that there's on our bodies and how working out can heal us and certain things that we may be dealing with. So how can we implement wellness into our everyday lives? Like I said, I think for some people, it's hard to like work it, out. It really is. And I will say, and one of my favorite phrases that the, the heels I will die on, and one mm. of the heels I will absolutely die on is that I hate that culture made health and wellness into just the external facade mm. that fitness just really is about the aesthetic and so that by itself turns people off yeah because they think but well, you know if I got to do all this that they have to morph into something that they're not for me the questions that you ask it come down to your quality of life and as I encourage all my clients um, you ever heard the phrase, what's the best way to eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm. That's the way you approach your health and wellness journey. You start with something small where by no means will I tell you if you've never worked out before, don't go take a, a spending class for an hour and a half. Mm. Start walking for 10 minutes. Mm. If you're not familiar with drinking water, I'm not going to tell you to go get that big gallon that has all the marks. Because right. that's self-defeating. But I will say, start with two bottles or two glasses of water a day. Start substituting things where if you haven't had, oh God, I'm sweating. Um, if you haven't had the chance to give up sweets, start pulling back on sweets and start rewarding yourself once a week. Mm. If you are so, if you've gotten hooked on caffeine and you have to have your fully loaded Coca-Cola every day, Start taking that away instead of saying that I'm going cold turkey because all of us don't have that ability to go cold turkey. Start mm -hmm. saying I'm going to go twice a week. Mm. And so it's about those gradual steps because when it's all or nothing, it is going to be nothing. Mm. Most wow. nine times out of 10, if we go in saying it's, it's got to be all or nothing, it's going to be nothing because you will feel overwhelmed. 
you'll feel self-defeated and you start in this vicious cycle. Well, and, and what it does, it turns inward because then it's what's the point if it's not going to work out? Yeah. Why am I even going to do this if it's not going to work out? And so then your entry point into your wellness journey becomes frustration. And it becomes punishment. You start viewing it as a punishment. Oh, you know, I ate well last night, so I got to go work this off. So if your entry point into your wellness journey is a punishment for something you ate over the weekend, chances are you're not going to stick with it because you're looking at it as a punishment, as mm -hmm. I, I, I have to go do this because, you know, I ate good at Big Mama House over the weekend. I have to work out because, you know, I want to get back in my skinny jeans as opposed to this is a quality of life that I want. I have a chance to reframe how I feel, um, to get off medications, to be an example to the little people or people in my household, um, because I know God has given me a purpose and mm. I have to be in the best condition possible to run my race. Mm. So when you reframe it as a, I, I, have, I, I have to, to, I get a chance to do this mm. because this is something that's going to nurture just not myself, but other people, because whatever energy and space you're walking in, your impact is felt by everybody. If yeah. you are emotionally, mentally, and spiritually healthy, people feel your impact. Mm -hmm. Just as if you are not emotionally, spiritually, and mentally healthy people feel your impact. So yeah. when we talk about the light that people walk in, that's what they're referring to. So for fitness, it comes down to, as I tell everyone I work with, do not bombard yourself with this big exhaustive list. Start with, okay, I don't have a chance to work out. Let me start on my lunch break walking 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Right. And then go further. Then mm -hmm. try something else. Okay, my kids want to start riding a bike. Okay, I'm going to get a bike too. And we're going to see how it goes. I've never walked a nature trail, trail next to my uh, house. My, my little people want to go bike riding. So let me get the bikes mm -hmm. and then I can walk. So it's finding those creative ways so you won't feel overwhelmed when you mm -hmm. start embarking on this journey. Suicide, suicidal thoughts, like how has that been dealing with that? It's a struggle. It really is. Right now, I'm good. But back then, like my young adult years, suicide was like the main thing on my mind. Um, I could be at work having a wonderful day, but during the entire time, I could be laughing and joking with you. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm goofy. And so even though I was like this on the outside, on the inside, I was just like, okay, what am I going to do today? How can I end my life today for real this time? Um, and that's, those were my main thoughts. When I would get back to my barracks, I would see what was around, what could I use, what could I do? And someone who is suicidal, there's a lot of signs that we can look for when it comes to that. But there's also those people who are very silent. They don't, they don't reveal their plans to no one because they don't want anyone to stop them. With the depression coupled with the suicide um, attempts and thoughts, I just got comfortable with it. It was one of, like, it would be nothing for me to go into my room and take like a whole bunch of pills hoping that, you know, this is it or, you know, swallow something that was poisonous, maybe drink too much hoping that this will really do it, um, drive too fast. I mean, all of this. Start embarking on this journey. Mm, wow. And that's very, I, I, you're right. And I feel like sometimes with the whole thought of working out, sometimes people may place it like a chore. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if, if you look at it that way, you're not going to feel like doing it. You know, and I am happy how you mentioned like starting small, like walking for 10 minutes. It may seem like, oh, that's nothing, but it's a start, you know, so, and I have read too that walking is very healthy, like just to take some time to walk. It seems like, you know, I, I know in my mindset, sometimes I think of people that, you know, they run and they jog, you know, and it's like, okay, that's more effective, but 
obviously that's not the case. Like do what works best for you. I think that's something we should also remember too sometimes. And walking is often overlooked because we're in a space where everybody wants these hard, rough and tumble workouts. And walking is like, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. And it's free. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of my neighbors, it seemed like we all go walking on clockwork on our lunch breaks. And one of my coworkers, um, she'll put in, um, she'll go back and listen to some of her favorite shows or a podcast. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. while she's walking, she'll go back and listen to a podcast. Or if there's a favorite show that she likes to watch, she'll turn it on and listen to it while she's walking. Mm -hmm. So she was like, I want to listen to my podcast. So I get my podcast and I have my mental health break. So it's finding those little pockets where it's really taking care of, of yourself. So like I said, if you're not in a space where you uh, can, can go to a gym, if you're in a nice uh, neighborhood, go walking. Mm. This right. is the, the best. And especially right now when the weather's changing, this is the perfect time to go walking. Yes, definitely. So speaking of just some of our mindsets, one of the things that I read is that you said you want to demolish limiting mindsets that have created a stagnation in life. And also I read that you were talking about, are you sabotaging your wellness journey? So we kind of touched on it a little bit. You know, sometimes, you know, we think of working out as a chore, or like you said, go hard or go all or nothing. Yeah, naturally, you're going to decide to do nothing because you will be drained and it's going to be unattainable goals. And who has time, you know, to stress themselves? We have enough to deal with. So it's like, okay, because I know I'm a habitual join the gym. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And don't do it. You know, (laughs) like, nah, I'm good. (laughs) And that's one thing I would love to break out of that habit. And I know a lot of us do that. We'll get that gym membership, especially... Mm -hmm beginning of the year we get those goals yeah I'm gonna do something different new me new me going to that gym and it's like oh man I don't have time for this I'm tired you know (laughs) or some of us if we work out wrong I know in the past like in my habitual gym life joining a gym and maybe being good for a few weeks and then it's like Mm -hmm. oh I'm in a ton of pain I can't do this so how can we break the chains of sabotaging our wellness journey and also how can we work on our mindset too so that we can stop having stagnation in our lives? Well, I will tell everyone that to go to the gym, that no one intentionally sets up to go fail. None Mm -hmm. of us do. And most times when I'm at the gym, I can tell everybody, I'm on the treadmill, and I can tell everybody just renewed their membership because you got your new gear on, you got your water mug, you got your affirmations going, and everybody walks in and goes, hey, what am I supposed to do? And so what ends up happening, you'll see somebody on the treadmill, so you'll mimic them, and then you'll go lift some weights, or you'll go to take one of the group fitness classes, and you'll do it for about 22 days. And then by the end of the month, you give up. And it's not because you don't want to give up. It's not because you set out to fail. It's primarily because you haven't created a direction you want for yourself. Mm. And so... Just like we have financial goals, supposed to, just like we're supposed to have other goals in our life, to achieve your wellness goals has to be equally in, equally intentional, where mm-hmm. you have to sit down, you go into the year going, okay, I want to go to the gym or however my program is going to work out to achieve this goal. Right. And from that overarching goal, then we develop the things that go under it to achieve it. And so mm-hmm. you are more likely to stay with it when you, you know, we always call it that your why statement. So when mm-hmm. you have your why and your vision ahead of you, it's easier for you to stick with it because, you know, okay, because I said I want to go on vacation in August and I want to lose weight or I've been diagnosed with high blood pressure or I'm pre-diabetic, I want to come off of this medication. In mm-hmm. order to do that, I need to go to the gym three days a week. I need to drink more water and I need to implement these other steps. And so your overarching, all the steps should move towards your purpose. But instead, we just at the first year say, I got to get back in the gym. And that's where it stays. Mm. And so we don't create a cohesive package of 
what are the steps we need to stick with it? So that's why I referenced earlier that I hate that fitness just has always been pushed as the exterior aesthetic. Yeah. Because it's so much more than that. And it's our quality of life. And so I've seen where we get into this space of the limiting beliefs. And it sounds like um, this is just the way my family is. Yeah. Um, everybody in my family got it. This is just how we are. Right. Nobody else has done this. And so when you tell yourself that, you have basically said, what's the point? Because I've never seen anybody else do this either. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about generational curses, there also comes a point we have to create generational blessings where it says, yes, every other person in my family may have had high blood pressure, but we also have had horrible eating habits. We've also not exercised. We've also made my elders, I may have also lived in a food desert, mm -hmm. which didn't allow them to have the most nutrition of meals. But since I am now in a space where I have access to better resources, better food resources, and access to health, better health care in a gym, this doesn't have to be my, this, this will not be my fate. And right. so it's that whole shifting of that narrative. So there are things that when I grew up, we lived in the food desert where the grocery store that was closest to our house, the produce was always bad. Um, we didn't have the freshest food, fruits. We didn't have the freshest meats. Um, to show you how insidious it was, where on the weekends, they always put the cheap alcohol stuff in the front. They always put like the Mad Dog and the Thunderbird right mm. at the entrance every weekend. Mm. Wow. Because it was just insidious going to say, well, we know what y'all want. Yeah, right. And so it's that, that collective thing to say, yes, I may have started this way. I may have been exposed to this, but this doesn't have to be my end. Mm. And so there are certain things that have been subconsciously taught to us that we have to dismantle because I remember growing up and I had, you know, um, I, years ago, I made the decision not to eat pork. It was my mm. personal decision because it was making me sick. Mm. Wow. And to have people go, I just can't give up the pork. I don't care how it makes me feel. And I remember telling this young lady I work with, why would you intentionally consume something that's making you sick? Right. And she didn't have an answer for it. Mm. And so I had to ask her, well, where else in your life are you consuming things that are making you sick for instant pleasure? Mm. Because if it showed up there, it shows up someplace else. Whew. Wow. Man, that is, that's a very, that's a spotlight, definitely. And that's putting a mirror up to think about that. And you do have a good point because a lot of us, we are really putting things in our body that are making us sick. And sometimes we're aware that we shouldn't be eating certain things. Like we know, well, I eat too many sweets. I have a terrible headache afterwards. Oh, I ate something that's too salty. My chest is hurting afterwards. Like sometimes we are aware of it, but like you said, we want that instant gratification and food is comfort, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, and it's accessible, whether and it's good or bad for us. And I'm in the South and food is love. Mm -hmm. I don't care yeah. what it, if it's a Monday, let's eat. You had mm -hmm. a bad day, let's right. eat. You right. had a, a day, let's eat. Yeah, because communally, that's how we share our affection to each other through food. We we yeah. break meals. That's that's how, that's our as our community. That's our love language. Mm -hmm. And right. so, it's that space of not denying those around you of their love language, mm -hmm. but also being aware of what you can and cannot have. Right. It's taken forever. But I finally got my folks to make greens. Are you ready to join the new workforce solution? Currently, many people are working from home. Right now, during the pandemic and also the recession, many Americans are finding flexible ways to earn a living and support their family 
on their terms. Many name brand companies utilize customer service in order to thrive. Little did you know that a lot of those agents are sitting at home just like you. Contact FlexPro today and learn more on how you can make money, earn a living, have flexibility, more time with your family on your own terms. Finally got my folks to make greens with turkey in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and finally over the holidays, my mom was like, I made the greens with turkey. And it was like, thank you. It's only yeah. taken forever, <laughs> but thank you. Right. But it was not something that I pushed. Mm -hmm. It was not something that I come, I, I, I never rail against friends or relatives because of their choices. I yeah. just sit firm in my belief. Mm -hmm. to the right. point where they're like okay we know you don't eat this so we went ahead and made your own little dish so most times it's a small little something but they're aware of what I don't want mm -hmm. but it wasn't me finger wagging condemning somebody else because we're all at different paces of our race right right wow and that's the thing you know like I'm from the south too food is a part of life it's a part of our culture food's also a comfort dish and also with food sometimes it's things that sometimes our diet is something that is generational you know like and it's hard sometimes to break away from something that you've been eating your whole life your family's been eating you know your your, your ancestors and so on and so forth you know and then of course we know in our culture certain food habits seriously came from slavery mm -hmm. honestly too when they didn't have a choice but to eat certain things, but then we flipped it and adapted it and started eating these things, you know, that, you know, some of those things definitely aren't good for us. So food is just something that with fitness and wellness is something that it takes for everyone, I guess, to kind of learn themselves and decide what's best for you. Because I mean, of course, like the vegan and plant-based lifestyle is heavy now, but that doesn't work for everybody, you know, but it's just important for, I think, a lot of us to look at our relationship with food too, and mm -hmm. just really be bold enough to say, hey, maybe this particular thing I'm eating is not agreeing with me. It really is making me sick. Or just even researching some of the foods that we do eat. Because like I said, meatless is not for everybody, you know, and even giving up pork is not for everyone. I personally haven't had a pork chop. I can't tell you how long. It's been years. And I don't really have like a monumental moment that I decided I no longer wanted to eat it I just decided you know I'll try not eating certain pork you know products for personal reasons and I haven't missed it you know but to each his own some people can't go without eating certain things you know and I get that but of course that's another category where we can also look into how we prepare certain foods we don't have to fry everything we can bake things <laughs> we don't have to fry the air, the air fryer and so I'm very adamant about telling people who work with me or ask me questions that to eliminate from their minds that the only way that you can be healthy is to become totally plant-based right. because that may not work for you if you have budget constraints, if you have a family, if you have mm -hmm. little people, there are so many different variables for everyone. So that may not be your course of action. Because it may be hard to explain to a three-year-old why they're eating certain things. Yeah. Because little people are already fussy. And now <laughs> you're trying to add in another layer. Some, ki some kids are, are adapt, uh, adapt to it. Some don't. So right. I tell people meatless or vegan or vegetarianism may not be your course of action. Mm -hmm. The overarching goal is to have a balanced diet where you minimize sugars, minimize sodium, um, and really minimize the processed foods and the junk food out your diet. Right, right, right. And I just, you know, like I said, this is a great conversation because I think, you know, just in our health and our wellness journeys, 
a lot of times we have certain, like you said, with mindset that may create the stagnation because we may, like you said, we'll be working out as a chore with food. Sometimes we're aware, like we shouldn't be eating a certain thing, but we sometimes may not have the willpower to say, hey, even if I don't stop eating this altogether, I can at least reduce how much I do consume certain foods. You know, like sometimes it's hard for us to have those conversations, Mm -hmm. you know, in order to better ourselves. But a lot of times things that certain choices we can make to better ourselves are just a minor thing. Like, hey, I'm not going to eat as much sweets this week. You know, I won't eat as many fried foods. You know, when I have the choice, I'll decide to eat something baked. Sometimes it's like something that simple is just that hard, you know, to make a decision or, hey, I don't have time to join a gym per se, but I may have time to walk the cul-de-sac in my subdivision or something for 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes it's just, you know, it's just that hard to change our routines and our mindset and our way of thinking. Oh, Um, it's it's difficult. mm -hmm. And a lot of it requires us to detox our mind as well as detoxing our palates. Because if you're always used to fried foods, um, baked will not taste the same. True. If you're used to certain meals, something with a cleaner, when I say cleaner, um, limited processed foods, um, it may take you a while to warm up to it. Yeah. And so I tell people, don't do a barrel and go cold turkey and just get rid of all your old food and buy a bunch of new food and you don't have an idea how to prepare it, but then you're stuck with it and you got to eat it. Um, That's why for me and my own journey, take your time. Because right. I just went this thing like, never mind, I'm just going to start from scratch. And I went to Publix, bought a lot of food, and didn't have a clue what most of it was. It just said clean and healthy. And I bought it, and I was stuck with it, and I had to eat it. And so through trial and error, that's how I learned what worked for me and what didn't work. So I'll tell most people, I tell everyone, I'm not 100% plant-based. Mm. I go between the two. Mm -hmm. If I'm traveling, I tend to go plant-based because I don't like, I don't eat fried foods. There are certain things I don't eat and Mm -hmm. plant-based is a safer option for me. Mm. Um, However, if I'm someplace else and I want to indulge, I give myself the permission to indulge. Yeah. And so in your journey, give yourself some grace and permission to also live your life too. Yes. Yes. Speaking but know of, when to stop. Right. Now, speaking of giving ourselves grace, um, I know that we've talked about wellness and we've also talked about both sides of the coin, how, you know, the external, but also the internal. So my final question is with self-love, you know, which is one of the biggest things that I do like to talk to my guests about. I like how with our conversation, we are talking about the physical aspect, though, because we do have to take care of our bodies, you know, so with self-love, and I know self-love and self-care sometimes is interchangeable. Um, Generally, when I do talk about self-love, I am talking about the internal, though, but how can we tie self-love in our wellness journey? Because I think that is important. I think when we love ourselves, we can maybe get into the mindset of saying, I deserve to be healthy physically. I deserve to not eat things that are making me sick. Or if I know that my doctor has told me, hey, you should lose maybe 10 pounds or work out. It will make your life better and make you healthier. And sometimes we struggle with that. But maybe we do tie in self-love and just love ourselves and love our bodies. Maybe we can have a better wellness journey. So how do, what's your opinion on how do you tie in self-love with our wellness journey? Like how can we apply self-love to have a better outlook, I guess, with our wellness journey? Well, I think the first thing is we have to break down the myth that self-love is selfish, Mm -hmm. Um, that we have to throw away the narrative of feeling that as, especially black women, we Mm -hmm. have to constantly be the martyr Mm. that for so long in movies and TV shows, you've always seen the woman that's lauded for her tireless efforts where she's given all that she has to everybody. Meanwhile, she's her emotions are tattered and she's every place. But then we prop that up as, as, as goals. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she is struggling inside. Right. And I know it's, it's, it's so cliche, but it is so true that when you are depleted and you are empty, there is nothing you can give anybody. Right, right. Um, and so a lot of times the trope is that we're always angry, but mm-hmm. the reality is we're tired and we're frustrated and we feel unseen. Mm. and so it's always I'm giving I'm giving I'm giving and nobody comes back to say thank you nobody Mm. comes back and say what can I do to help you right take a load off I got it and so because of family obligations career obligations we're always at the cusp of giving and giving and giving and so there's nothing left for us Sometimes I think it's a healthy selfishness to take care of yourself because um, when if you're down, then how can you help someone else? Uh, so that's a it's a thing back to balance in my life that I have to I have to continue to struggle with and work with work with because we as women we're kind of naturally caregivers, you know we're the one that takes care of the the birth of the child and the nursing and that's just in us. So when you're struggling with self-care and trying to earn a living and putting food on the table and looking out for your children, looking out for your husband, looking out for your home, it is, it's a challenge. There's nothing left for us. Right. And so we're trying to feed, we're trying to basically give the world all that we have where we're living out of a thimble of water and love for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so when we're doing this, it's a a learning process of having to ask for what you want. And a lot of this also comes as creating boundaries. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we are terrified to impose, especially for people that we love, because we Mm -hmm. don't want to say no. Right. But it comes also a space of, because this is something that I've had to learn in my own life as setting boundaries to say, no, I'm not available today. Right. No, I can't take that on. Mm-hmm. And if no is, is still a little hard, um, you can break it into my schedule won't allow it right now. Right. I have other commitments and I'm unable to squeeze this in. Mm. So if you're not full on ready to go, no. Mm-hmm. You know, I looked at my schedule and right now I can't take on something else. And, and, and your schedule may very well be you're sitting in your row watching Netflix for the weekend. Mm-hmm. None of us have to know, but it's, it's creating that deliberate thing of setting aside time without guilt. Right, right. Without feeling like, well, you know, you having to justify to somebody why you need a break. It's because I need one to replenish my mental and emotional Mm self-care because I have taken my kids all over town for practice in school this week. And yes, I got a babysitter so I could go to dinner for a few hours and talk to some Mm grownups. That's part of refilling your cup. And so many times we made women feel guilty for existing in that space because we're quick to say, well, you know, my grandmama did it and, and, and she never asked for anything. Right. But she also, sometimes you can see the sadness on her face too. 
Yeah. Exactly. Because she wasn't given an option to, to not care for everyone. And it's when you just said that, I said to myself, because our grandmas did not have a choice. And again, that's why we have to break those generational curses that, and then especially amongst women and women of color. And you mentioned it earlier, being a martyr. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of times it's emblazoned in us that we have to be this long suffering martyr. I just had a conversation with someone earlier today that just as a mother, we're even brainwashed, you know, and this is a, it, like I said, this is a tricky subject because it's like, oh, of course you put your children ahead of you, mm-hmm. but sometimes you cannot literally put your children ahead of every single aspect of your life to the point mm-hmm. where you're not taking care of yourself. And I think that is sometimes what's been emblazoned in our mind that we have to just have the bare minimum be at the bottom. And that's why we're drained. Some of us can't work out to take care of ourselves physically or mentally because we are simply drained. There's nothing left. And I remember when I was little, there are three of us and I'm the oldest. And every Friday, my mom would come home, put us in the car and drop us off at my grandmother's house every Friday. Mm. And it seemed like before we got out the car, good the car was out down the street. And it was like, wait, wait, where did she go? <laughs> it's like, did she just throw us out the car? And it was like, oh, she did. She, she did. Because my mom would drop us off. She would hang around for maybe 15, 30 minutes at the max. And she was <laughs> gone. And I'm like, did she just leave us? And one day I finally asked her. Now I was grown because I wasn't going to ask when I was a child. I, had, I asked her, I said, what did you do when you dropped us off? And she said, I came back home and went to sleep. Mm. She said that because I wanted two good nights of rest. Mm. Wow. And I was like, did you miss her? She said, not not Friday, I didn't. No, mm -mm, I didn't. She said, I love y'all to death, but no, I didn't. Mm. And she said, by Saturday night, she's like, yeah, I guess I'll go get my babies. I was like, well, why didn't you come get us Saturday? She said, but I wasn't ready yet. Um, so I came and got you Sunday. Mm. But that was her way of crafting self-care for herself. Yeah. Where, and it's, it's weird to think about it, that out of a whole month, she had two nights a week of sound restful sleep to herself. Right. That that's how she carved it out. But there are women that don't have that support network. Nope. There are women that don't have that space. And so they're still running on empty. Yes. Mm, Wow. That's true. And that's, again, why self-love is so important. Knowing self-love, self-worth. But again, so many, we don't even have that resource, like you Mm -hmm. said. And and I think it all ties in together why a lot of us are struggling. Some of us really do want to do better with our wellness journey, whether that's internal or external, but some of us just really cannot. We don't have the resources. You know, that's why it's so important also to have these conversations as well. And hopefully in the conversations, it helps some people who may be in a situation where It may appear that they don't have help, but maybe they really do. Maybe they just have to take some time if they can get some time to just clear their head. Sometimes we just don't have time to just clear our head and step back and think for a moment, you know, and those are some of the struggles that we deal with. And stress also contributes to physical health, you know, bad physical health. Stress contributes to our midsection sometimes, you know, and bloating and things like that. It all ties together for sure and that's why like I said it is important to have conversations like this and hopefully it will help change a person's mindset it'll help them think of a solution maybe because like I said unfortunately some of us really don't have those resources you know especially when you're a mother and god forbid a single mother you know it's a lot of work you know and as women again like I said we we're taught to just we're conditioned I think sometimes as girls mm-hmm. just to be a martyr putting yourself last you know Absolutely. and I will say that if you are in an area that has um with if you do have little people let me frame it that way there are a lot more gyms that offer child care yeah 
So if you're in a space where you need that time for yourself, definitely look for organizations that offer childcare. So they recognize that you need a space and they have crafted spaces with um, attendance on hand that will engage with your child, have activities with your child, so you can have at least 90 minutes to yourself to exercise. So if you're in a space that have us have gyms that offer that, absolutely look into that. Mm. Yes, definitely. This has been a great conversation. I love how we went a little deeper with it because it's important, you know, like I said, everything I think, what, that's why it's self-care and self-love. It's a great coupling. You know, because it all works together, you know, how we take care of ourselves internally and externally for sure, because it all leads to our wellness and just having a better mindset. So again, this has been a great conversation, but before we end everything, tell everybody how they can connect with you, how they can learn more and give everybody information on how they can follow you as well on social media. Oh, thank you. Well, if you are on Facebook, you can follow me at Coach Beverly K. Johnson. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can follow me at I, I am Beverly Johnson. I'm Beverly Johnson. Um, also, I have a website. It's BeverlyKJohnson.com. Um, pretty much, if you put in Beverly K. Johnson, you will probably find me. Um, if you don't put in the K, you will find the supermodel, and I'm pretty sure she's tired of us getting confused. So um, put in Beverly K. Johnson because, again, the model Beverly Johnson does not want y'all bothering her anymore, asking her about fitness questions. <laughs> and I did notice when um <laughs> that yeah you have the same name as her, so yeah I did a double take when um <laughs> when I got the information for you. I'm like Beverly Johnson, <laughs> and that's why I had to start adding the K because yeah. one lady I was talking, she was like, I went on your page. I said you forgot the K, didn't you? You did. Because you wouldn't bother, you went and bothered that nice lady, and she's tired of y'all asking her about fitness tips. Well, hey, <laughs> but again, this has been a great conversation, and I definitely have enjoyed speaking with you. And I do feel like this conversation again is something that I think it will bless someone. You know, I think there's definitely a lot of tools that you mentioned in here, and just also to just that it's okay to not be okay it's okay and not where you want to be in your fitness journey I think that's just we just have to stop being so guilty and being so hard on ourselves but we also have the opportunities to grow like we can start over we can start small like you said if we're going to do all or nothing it's always going to be nothing so don't even don't have these unrealistic fitness goals say hey I'm gonna start small I'll make an effort to walk maybe 10 or 15 minutes this week, not even mm -hmm. every day. Let me start small. And I'm happy that you said it's just okay to think that way. So again, thank you guys for joining the Key Chat. And again, I definitely did enjoy this conversation. And I hope you guys pick up on a lot of things that Beverly said. Of course, a big part of self-love is self-care. So this has been a great conversation. Just with some information on how we can just make some choices with our wellness, whether it's changing our diet or taking the effort to, like I said, just go out and have a walk weekly. And then that weekly may turn into every other day. And then that may turn into a few days a week. You just starting small, it's okay to just take one step for our betterment. So thank you guys again for joining the Q Chat. Make sure you be safe. And of course, make sure you go love yourself. Now they must have did this beat.